Welcome class! Today we'll explore regression analysis, a powerful tool used to examine the relationship between variables. Specifically, we'll focus on simple linear regression, which predicts the value of a dependent variable based on one independent variable. All right, let's start with the basics. Regression analysis is a tool used to examine whether a variable, let's call it y, is useful to explain another variable, let's call it x. Think of it as trying to predict the value of y based on the value of x. Simple linear regression, SLR, is the simplest form of this analysis where we look at just one independent variable, x, and see how it affects a dependent variable, y. Simple linear regression summarizes the relationship between a dependent variable and one independent variable by estimating a linear relationship. When more than one variable is used, it's called multiple regression. But we're keeping it simple here with just one variable. In regression analysis, we have two key variables. Dependent variable, y, also known as the explained variable, this is the variable we're trying to predict or explain. Independent variable, x, also known as the explanatory variable, this is the variable used to explain the dependent variable. Linear regression assumes a straight line relationship between the dependent and independent variables. Our objective is to fit a line to the observations of y and x to minimize the squared deviations from the line. Here's the equation for simple linear regression. y is the dependent variable for observation i. x is the independent variable for observation i. b not is the intercept, and b1 is the slope coefficient. Yeah, is the error term. We estimate b not in b1 by choosing values that minimize the sum of the squared errors. Understanding the coefficients is crucial. The slope coefficient b1 tells us how much y changes for a one unit change in x. If b1 is positive, y and x move in the same direction. If negative, they move in opposite directions. Intercept b0 is the predicted value of y when x is 0. Sometimes this makes sense, like in some economic models, and sometimes it doesn't, like when zero is not a meaningful value for x. There are two main types of data used in regression analysis. Number one is time series, observations from different time periods for the same entity. Number two is cross-sectional, observations from the same time period for different entities. Then there is panel data that combines both types. To trust our SLR model, we make a few key assumptions. First is linearity. The relationship between x and y is linear. This means that a change in x leads to a proportional change in y. If the relationship is not linear, our model might be biased and give incorrect predictions. Second is homoskedasticity. The variance of the error terms is constant across observations. But this means that the spread of the errors is the same for all values of x. If this assumption is violated, we have heteroskedasticity, which can affect the reliability of our model. Third is independence. The observations are independent of each other. This means that the value of one observation does not influence another. If this assumption is violated, we might have autocorrelation, where the errors are correlated across observations. Fourth is normality. The error terms are normally distributed. This assumption is important for hypothesis testing and constructing confidence intervals. In large samples, the normality assumption is less critical, but it's still good to check. If these assumptions hold, our model is likely to give reliable results. If not, we might need to transform our data or use a different model. We often want to test whether the relationship we've estimated is statistically significant. This involves hypothesis tests. F-test. This tests whether at least one of the regression coefficients is different from zero. 
The null hypothesis is that all regression coefficients are zero, meaning that x has no effect on y. The alternative hypothesis is that at least one coefficient is not zero. T test tests whether a specific regression coefficient is significantly different from zero. Hypothesis testing in includes analysis of variance which breaks down the total variation into explained and unexplained parts. How well does our regression model fit the data? We use a few metrics to assess this. We use measures like the coefficient of determination, f-statistic, and the standard error of regression to assess the goodness of fit. Coefficient of determination r squared. This tells us the percentage of the variation in y that is explained by x. An r squared of 0.75 means that 75% of the variation in y is explained by x. The closer r squared is to 1, the better the model fits the data. F statistic tells us whether our overall model is statistically significant. A high F statistic indicates that the model explains a significant portion of the variation in Y. Standard error of estimate measures the accuracy of the predictions. It's the standard deviation of the error terms. A smaller standard error of estimate indicates a better fit, meaning your model's predictions are closer to the actual values these metrics together help you understand how well your model captures the relationship between the variables and whether the results are statistically significant. Sometimes the relationship between variables isn't linear, so we might transform our variables. Common transformations include log-lin model lin log model and log log model. In log lin model, the dependent variable is in logarithmic form. This is useful when the relationship between the variables is exponential. The slope coefficient b1 represents the absolute change in y for a relative change in x. Suppose you're analyzing the relationship between advertising spend, what x, and sales revenue, y, you believe that a 1% increase in advertising spend leads to a consistent percentage increase in sales revenue. You would use the log lin model to capture this relationship. If you find that B1 is 0.05, it means that a 1 unit increase in X leads to approximately a 5% increase in Y. Lin log model, the independent variable, is in logarithmic form. This is useful when the effect of x on y diminishes as x increases. The slope coefficient represents the absolute change in y for a relative change in x. Suppose you're analyzing the relationship between the number of branches, which is x a company has, and its total sales, y. You believe that as the number of branches increases, the marginal increase in sales diminishes. You would use the lin log model to capture this relationship. If you find that is 200, it means that a 1% increase in the number of branches leads to an increase in sales by 200 units. In log log model, both variables are in logarithmic form. This model is also called the double log model and is often used to calculate elasticities. The slope coefficient represents the relative change in y for a relative change in x. Suppose you're analyzing the relationship between the price of a product, x, and the quantity sold, y. You believe that both the price and quantity have an elasticity relationship. You would use the log-log model to capture this relationship. If you find that B1 is minus 1.2, it means that a 1% increase in the price leads to a 1.2% decrease in the quantity sold. Selecting the correct functional form depends on examining the goodness of fit measures, R squared, F statistic, and SE, as well as patterns in the residuals. Many statistical software packages enable us to visually examine and inspect the distribution of the residuals. 
And there you have it. Simple linear regression in a nutshell. It's a powerful tool that, when understood well, can help you make sense of a lot of data and relationships in finance. Make sure to practice with examples from the CFA curriculum to cement your understanding. Keep asking questions and diving deep into these concepts. You've got this. Remember, the goal is not just to pass the exam, but to truly understand these concepts so you can apply them in your finance career. Good luck, and keep studying hard.